Okay, so first I would like to thank Professor Rosman and Professor Bomeister for giving me the opportunity to present uh, my results, to share with you my results. Um, I am currently a first year PhD student in the lab of Professor Avi Minsky at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. Uh, and I'm working on, on, on the Mimi virus. I'm sure you have heard about this uh, giant virus living in, in Acantamoeba polyphagia. And I will be focusing today on the morphogenesis and the structure and, and the relation between them uh, of this virus. So it has been first uh, discovered uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, during a pneumonia outbreak in a hospital in, in Bradford, UK, and uh, was first uh, characterized as, the first, uh, as a small bacteria by the lab of Professor Raoult in Marseille in, in South France. Uh, for its uh, gram-positive staining as well as for its, for its size. But after several attempts to, to culture this bacteria and after also several bacterial tests, uh, they were uh, uh, able to understand that it's, in fact it was not a bacteria but a, a virus. So they, they sequenced the genome and, and classify it as, um, as a, a part of the family of the NCLDV, LDS, NCLDV uh, viruses, so it's a nucleocytoplasmic large DNA viruses which comprise the Fox viruses, the iridoviruses, the Ficodna viruses, the Aspar viruses, which are all large DNA viruses which are mostly replicated in the host cytoplasm. So, but what is the, the, the Mimi virus? So, as you can see from a, a, a micrograph of the lab of Professor Raoult in Marseille, it's a non of particle um, with the eicosahedral volcapsid, some external fibrils are also visible here. Uh, it, it may be a polysaccharide or glycoprotein. It has a one or several internal membranes uh, a protein shell, a DNA, a DNA core, it's hard to, to see here, but I will show you uh, uh, other pictures. And the size is about 600 nanometer. It has a, a linear DNA, double strand DNA of 1.2 million base pairs, uh, coding for more than 900 uh, proteins. A lot of genes are for the first time described in, in, in the viral world, such as protein translation, DNA repair enzymes, hyperon, and so on. So we can really say that this, this virus is, is, a, is a monster. Uh, and the lab of Professor, uh, Professor Rossman has also began to work on it and, tra and trying to do a single particle reconstruction. And here you can see a, a prelim pre preliminary result that has been uh, published. Okay, so we decided a year ago to work on this virus in, 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 in the lab I'm working and, and um, decided to apply uh, several techniques that are uh, daily used uh, in, at the Weizmann Institute, such as uh, electron tomography, high pressure freezing, uh, scanning electron microscopy, in order to, uh, to uh, characterize the different steps and the morphogenesis of, the, of this virus. I would like to stress that the, the, the size of this virus is really important for us in order to understand all the processes the, the virus has to, to go through during, during its uh, replication cycle. And is really, the size really helping us to understand these processes. And we may hope that a better understanding of, of uh, the specific processes in this virus may shed light on, 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 uh, on, open, on still open question in the viral, uh, viral replication and, and viral uh, um, uh, rep uh, replication. So here you have a, 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 a micrograph that where we, I take uh, several months ago of the virus. So we are talking now on the, about the morphology of the virus. Yeah, here, this is the, the cryo-EM picture of the lab of Professor uh, Rosman. Here, here you have uh, the, the micrograph negative stain uh, of uh, the, the lab of Professor Raoult. And you can see that our micro, micrograph that is also a negative stain uh, micrograph is really more resembled to the, to the cryo-EM uh, picture. And this is because we are using a very specific, a very, um, um, a very important technique for preserving the, the, uh, the sample, which is high pressure freezing. And, and in, in, in fact, you, you, you freeze your, your sample in a very uh, uh, rapid manner and a very high pressure. And you can see that the conservation of the, the sample is, is, is really uh, uh, significant. And, and, and you, you may see the difference between the two, the two, the two, the two figures. So the, the, la the fibril layer appears to be much more uh, dense than what was observed before. Uh, you can see uh, the, 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 the eicosahedral uh, capsid, uh, the uh, membrane uh, inside the capsid, the DNA. There is also a, DNA, uh, a protein shell that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, about the size of the, the virus, uh, uh, only the capsid is about half a micron. All the virus is about uh, 700, 800 nanometers. So again, it's, it's really a, a large virus. Uh, several pictures where you can see uh, several components of the, of, of, of the structure of the viruses. For example, you see the protein shell uh, surrounding the DNA core, uh, the eicosahedral capsid. And, and, and uh, here we, we see a single vertex. It's a very interesting feature that was also reported in the, in, the, in the paper of Professor Rothman. This vertex is about uh, 600 angstrom, and we believe that it is important for, uh, for viral infection, and, and I, I will show you how, uh, how and why. Uh, we did several uh, scan scanning electron microscopy experiments and, uh, and we were amazed to see such a well-defined star-shaped structure in the virus. So you see here the, the, the star. Uh, you see a complex in the middle. We see also this star 
uh, uh, using uh, uh, transmission electron microscopy. And, and, and uh, we, leave, we believe that the, this uh, complex sitting in the middle of the star is in fact the single vertex that was uh, previously reported. Um, we did also uh, electron tomography on, on viruses. I'll show you just a, a, a little movie. So this is a volume, re volume rendering of, of the, of the, it's my computer, yes. So this is a volume rendering of the, of, of uh, the tomogram. You can see here the, 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 the capsid. You can li nicely, nicely see the two, mem that there, there are two membranes between the capsid and the protein shell, the DNA core. You see here the single vertex. And, and now we go to the, to the star that uh, we are seeing. So the star is sitting on the five-fold symmetry. All the facets really seem to be open like a flower. And, and uh, again, we believe, we believe that this is important for viral infection. We are currently trying to, to, uh, to better uh, characterize this structure and, and, and understand its role in morphogenesis. Okay, so let's uh, continue. So about the morpho morphogenesis now. So this is an, an abima. Uh, here you, you can see a, a little virus here and here. So uh, we have been able using scanning electron microscopy to characterize the different steps uh, of uh, the viral entry. In fact, it was an open question how the, the virus gets to the, to the cytoplasm of the, of the cell. And we've been able to, to, to show that it's uh, by uh, phagocytosis. So here you have the first step where the, the, the amoeba with its flat body and its arms is just pulling up, uh, uh, pulling up some viruses. Then uh, the pseudopod or the arm of the, the amoeba is just hugging the virus and uh, then uh, engulfing the particle. You can see uh, some connection between the amoeba and the particle and the virus. And uh, it is known that amoeba can secrete some uh, external matrix uh, in order to glue uh, the prey. So we see also this, uh, this, this uh, phagocytosis in uh, transmission electron microscopy. Here you see the amoeba, the virus. Uh, here you see uh, um, actin polymerization that is important for a, a pseudopod advancement toward the, the virus. And we are currently trying uh, to block poly uh, the, this uh, polymerization in order to see if the virus can uh, enter the cell. Um, um, can enter the cell. So after uh, being in the uh, engulfed, the, the particle finds itself in the, in, the, in the phagosome. Again, you see this vertex. You see, see uh, uh, several uh, uh, viruses in one, uh, one, one phagosome, meaning that the, the amoeba can engulf several particles at once. At one point, we see that the capsid is open. In the, it's still in phagosome. This is the phagosome. This is the cytoplasm. And we see a, a, a fusioning process between the internal membrane and the membrane of the phagosome, uh, thus leading uh, the, the way open for the, for the DNA uh, to go and to go outside and to reach uh, the, the cytoplasm. We are try, trying now to, to do electron tomography on this part in order to better characterize. But we'd like to propose that this single vertex is, and, and the star shape is in fact responsible for this opening. And as I say, as a flower, the virus is opening and, and the DNA can reach the cytoplasm. This raises over several questions such as uh, DNA survival in the cytoplasm. How does this, it, it survive to, to uh, di the digesting enzyme? How does it uh, uh, move into the cytoplasm? How does, it, how does it get to the nucleus? And how does it enter the nucleus? I would also to remind you that there is a protein shell surrounding the DNA. So does this protein shell also go with the DNA in the cytoplasm? All, all these are, are open questions. And we are trying to, to use uh, several techniques such as confocal microscopy, immunohistochemistry, in order to, uh, to, to answer this question. So once the DNA uh, has reached the, the, the nucleus of the amoeba, it begins to replicate. And now you see the factory site of the mimivirus uh, replication. A lot of particles are burning from the membrane. So usually the, the nucleocytoplasmic large DNA viruses are replicating, replicating the cytoplasm in very well-defined factories. But here, the factory is, in fact, around the nucleus. And you can see that the, the, the boundary of the nucleus is not so well uh, uh, defined now. And we think that the membrane is taking part uh, in the uh, virus uh, formation. So we can see different maturation steps, some capsids that, uh, that, uh, that are reading, some, some that are uh, open, some that are closed with DNA, without DNA. So all the maturation steps are present at once. It's not a synchronized event. Uh, what is uh, nice with this virus is because of its size, we're really able to zoom in and to, to, to look at, at the, the processes that are, that are taking, taking, taking place around the nucleus. So you see the different uh, uh, pro, uh, step of the maturation. So here you see the, the, the first budding of the particle. It's not really an ecozidal particle. It's more a round particle. You see the membrane of the nucleus that uh, uh, seems to take part in this process and may uh, be recycled by the virus in order to form this internal membrane that we are seeing here. Uh, the, then the particle is...